Okay, I'm going to do a quick lesson on partial derivatives and some of the implications of partial derivatives. So the last time we met, um, we talked about uh, functions of several variables, and one of the functions that we looked at was a wind chill function. What I have up on the screen right now is a uh, relative humidity heat index uh, function, similar to what we looked at uh, the last time we were together. All right, you'll see across the top here is the relative humidity, and down the side is the temperature. All right, now, when we talk about derivatives, we're talking about rate of change. You remember that from Calc 1. All right, when we talk about derivatives with functions of multiple variables, we're still talking about rate of change, but rate of change with one of the variables held constant. So for example, if I hold the temperature constant, let's say I'm looking at the temperature of 96 degrees. All right, then what I have is here the heat index with respect to the relative humidity for a fixed temperature. All right, so I can look at the rate of change of the relative, um, I'm sorry, of the heat index like this when the temperature is 96 degrees. So the whole idea here is that we're looking at fixing one of the variables in the function and taking the derivative or looking at the derivative with respect to the other variables. So you can see at the bottom of the screen, right, we can write a function g of t, all right, a function of, no, I'm sorry, not g of t, g of h relative humidity, uh, where the temperature is fixed at 96 degrees, okay? Um, now, um, if I, let me switch over to my whiteboard, okay. All right, so what we're really looking at here, all right, what we're really looking at here is essentially what's called partial derivatives, okay? And partial derivatives, you hold one variable constant. So if I should probably show you the notation before I use it, shouldn't I? All right, so when we talk about partial derivatives, let's do this. All right, we're taking the partial derivative with respect to one variable or the other. So I would talk about the partial I'm going to write this out in words first. Partial of f with respect to, let's say, x. All right, we would write that as f with a subscript of x. All right, and that is of the function x, y. In this case, we hold y constant. Okay, now there's other notations besides that. I remember Edward said something about the curly d's the last time we met. All right, so Edward, here are your curly d's. All right, we can say fx. We can say the partial derivative of f with respect to x, and yes, they look like twos. I will try to distinguish when I have to, uh, because z is f of x, y, we can also say the partial of z with respect to x, okay? So I can also take the partial with respect to y, So the primary notation here is going to be f with a subscript of y, x, y. And in this case, we hold x constant. All right, so my primary notation for this is going to be f sub y. But then we also have the curly d notation, right? Partial of f with respect to y or the partial 
of z with respect to y. Okay? All right, so we can define these just like you would um, define the derivative in Calc 1. All right, so f, uh, which one do I want to do first? fx. All right, so let's do f sub x, xy. All right, so for this one, y is held constant. So this is going to be whoop, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of, now remember, x is the variable. So it's going to be x plus h comma y minus f of xy all over h. All right, so this definition implies, right, that x is what's changing, y is constant, all right? And then I can also do fy of xy, and in this case, it's y that's changing, so I'm going to have the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x comma, again, this time y is changing, so y plus h minus f of xy all over h. Okay, so we have uh, a similar definition to what you're used to seeing in Calc 1. Okay, so uh, let's do a how-to. All right, how would you actually go about um, finding the partial derivative? So let's, I've got a function here. I'm going to try and do this in a reasonable fashion. All right, f of x, y, so it is x to the third plus x squared y to the third minus 2y squared. Sorry, it's a little, I'm still trying to get used to looking down at my notebook then up at my screen to write. All right, so here's my function. So I want to take what are called the first partials. So just like the first derivative in calculus, the first partials are fx and fy. All right, so fx, xy. All right, so remember, the, the subscript down here tells you what your variable is. The other variable is held constant, so just pretend it's a 2 or something like that. So we're taking the derivative with respect to x. All right, so with respect to x, that's going to be 3x squared. With respect to x, so remember, y cubed is just a constant. So I'm taking the derivative of x squared, so I'm going to get 2x y cubed, because y cubed is a constant. And then minus, well, y is a constant. So 2y squared is a constant. What is the derivative of a constant? It's 0. All right, so we end up here with the partial with respect to x being 3x squared plus 2xy cubed. OK. All right, um, the partial with respect to y, the other first partial, because remember, there's two of them. So the partial with respect to y, all right, with respect to y, that means now x is a constant. y is my variable. So x is a constant, so 3x squared is a constant, so its derivative is 0. With respect to y, y is my variable. 2x is a constant, all right, so I'm going to have 2x times the derivative of y cubed, so times 3y squared. I'll fix that in a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. I just realized what I did here. Okay, I'm glad I caught that. Go back. Remember the three seconds behind rule? It still applies. I'm taking the derivative of f, not, f, not fx. All right, I'm taking the derivative of this. All right, so let's go back and do this again. All right, the derivative with respect to y x cubed is a constant, so that is still 0, all right, plus x squared 
is a constant. I could almost hear all of you yelling at me when I was doing that. Um, so we're taking the derivative of y to the third. So that is going to be times 3y squared. And then minus, again, y is my variable, so I'm taking the derivative of this, so that's going to be 4y. All right, so if I just fix that term there, 3x squared, y squared, minus 4y. All right, so there are my two first, my two first partials. Okay, um, now, um, if you were looking at what this means, because I know there was a lot of questions that I was getting from a certain couple of people about what the derivatives mean. Okay. Um, you can think of the first partials as indicating the slope of the tangent line in a particular direction. So fx, right, this one here, would be the slope of the tangent line to the surface in the direction of x. All right, this would be the slope of the tangent line to the surface in the direction of y. Okay, so I have another example here, and in order for me to get to it, I need more page. So give me just a second. I need to scroll. Okay. All right. So let's look at this one. Um, there's my function. Okay, so it is f of x, y equals 4 minus x squared minus 2y squared. Okay. All right, so let's go through and we'll take, and I'm going to be a little more careful this time. I'm going to write them over here. fx of xy. All right, so again, x is our variable, y is a constant. All right, so the derivative of 4 is 0. The derivative of minus x squared is going to be minus 2x. And because y is a constant, the derivative of this last term here is 0. All right, f y, x y. All right, now y is my variable, and x is a constant. So the derivative of 4 is going to be 0. The derivative of x squared is going to be 0, because remember, x is a constant. And I'm taking the derivative here of this term. All right, so that's going to be minus 4 y. All right, so there are my two first partials. Now suppose I want to know um, at the point 1, 1. At the point 1, okay. All right, I'm going to write that as x, y. All right, now the reason I'm going to write that as x, y is because that's the way the book gives it, <laughs> okay? Um, it's not really... Uh, point in space, right? Because the point in space would be x, y, z. All right, so this is x is 1 and y is 1. All right, is the way we're looking at that, just a point in the x, y plane. If I want the point on the surface, right, the point on the surface, and I'm going to show you what this looks like in a minute. All right, I would have to plug 1, 1 into the function. So if I take f of 1, 1, that's going to be 4 minus 1 minus 2. So that's going to be 1. OK, that's another 1. All right, so the actual point on the surface is 1, 1, 1. OK. All right, so let's get the slope of the two tangent lines, and then I'll show you what this looks like. All right, so f x of 1, 1 is going to be negative 2, right? Because I plug 1 in for x. And f y of 1, 1 is going to be negative 4, because again, I'm plugging 1 in for y. All right, so this one is the slope 
let's see, slope of the tangent line, tan line, to f at the point that we just calculated. Right, in the direction, right, in the direction of x. This one over here is going to be the slope. Oh, hang on, having trouble writing today. It's going to be the slope. of the tangent line to f at the point 1, 1, 1 in the direction oh. I always have trouble writing my zeros or o's all right in the direction of y all right, now I can approximate a graph of this and then I'll, I'll show you what it actually looks like. All right, this is an elliptical paraboloid facing down. All right, so this has a shape that is basically one of these things. All right. And that one's behind. Kind of looking like this. All right, so we've got a point, let's say, uh, we've got a point here. And let's see, x is going this way, right? So the, the line is going to be essentially in the same direction as x for this one. Over here, uh, let me draw this in first. It'll be easier for me to, all right, that's really bad. All right, so the point is in the same place, and the y-axis goes this way. All right, so this one is going to be kind of angled more in that direction. Okay. Um, there is, let me see, uh, in the book, where's the book? Come on, book. There's the book. All right, so in the book, there's a better picture. I could go to GeoGebra also. I, I looked it up in GeoGebra, but I didn't really. Here we go. That's better. OK. All right. So you can see the first the first one here. All right. Um, is in the direction of X. So you can see it's kind of it's hard to really see, but it's it's kind of pointing in the direction of X where this one is more in the direction of Y. All right, so at a specific point, that's what the partial derivatives are representing for us, is the slope of the tangent line in a particular direction. We're going to make more use of that later on, okay? Um, but for right now, I'm just really worried about, you know, you learning to calculate these things, okay? Oh, you know what? I just realized I didn't switch the, uh, hang on. I switched it on my screen and didn't switch it for you guys. Hang on a second. Is that the one? That's the one. Okay. All right. Let me let me just say that one more time. All right. So this is the this is the picture of the line in the direction of x. This is the one with the picture in, of the line in the direction of y. Uh, it's, it's going to, I'm, I'm using a new switcher, so it's just taking me a little while to get used to the new switcher and I have to remember to switch the image for you as well as for me. I'll put a note when I post this video that I did that and to be patient. Um, okay. So, uh, what was I going to do next? Right. Okay. So for right now, we'll, we're going to make use of this a little bit later, but for right now, I want to work on making sure that you understand how to calculate the derivatives and um, uh, like that. So let's go back to my whiteboard and let me scroll down a little bit. 
and I think we're ready to go again. All right, so what we have to remember here is that all of the rules that we have for derivatives from Calc 1 still apply here. All right, so if I have a quotient, an actual quotient, then I need to use the quotient rule. If I have a product, I need to use the product rule. If I have a composite function, I need to use the chain rule. All right, so if I have something like this, f of xy equals, let's see, sine of x over 1 plus y. All right, so let's play around with the notation a little bit. I'll use the curly D notation. All right, so I want the partial of f with respect to x, okay? So remember, when we do this, y is constant, all right? So that means this whole denominator is a constant. Now this is a composite function, right? So of course I have to use the chain rule on it. So the derivative of the sine is cosine. It's gonna be cosine of this whole thing. times the derivative of the inside. Now again, we're taking the derivative of the inside with respect to x. So y is a constant. So the derivative of x is 1. So that is going to be 1 over 1 plus y. Okay, so uh, I don't know the best way to write this, I guess, would just be to put that out in front. All right, so there is the partial with respect to x. All right, let's do the partial of f with respect to y. All right, so remember when we're doing this with respect to y, now x is a constant. So I have to start the problem the same way, right, because the derivative of the sine is still cosine, x over 1 plus y. All right, now here's the thing. I need to take the derivative of the inside. This time y is the variable. x is the constant. All right, so I can probably get away with this. Hopefully you'll see what I'm doing. All right, so if this comes up and it's 1 plus y to the negative 1, I'm going to use the power rule on it, right? So that would be negative 1 1 plus y to the negative 2. So this is going to give me a negative x over 1 plus y squared. Okay, so again, it looks a little different from what I had here. So again, if I switch this around, put this term in front, whoop, squared that way, cosine Okay, I get that. All right, so you'll get used to playing around with them. Uh, the homework, there's a bunch of them for you to calculate, okay? And there's a whole bunch of them for you to practice on. Uh, when we get together on Thursday, I am planning on holding a class on Thursday. Uh, we can talk about this a little bit more if you want to, all right? if uh, I'm not sure how many people are going to get to go through this before then, but we'll see. Um, okay, so let's talk about higher order derivatives, right? In Calc 1, you did the second derivative, right? And that had the meaning for something. You could do the third derivative or the fourth derivative. All right, we can do partials uh, of higher order as well. Here's a trick, though, all right? And that is, notice, we end up with two first derivatives, basically. Partial with respect to x and the partial with respect to y. If I go, if I then say, all right, now I want to take the second derivative, I'm going to have two derivatives for each of my two first derivatives. All right, so if I start out with, all right, let's start out with what? No, we're not going to start out with y. Sorry, I just came from Calc 1. Uh, we're going to start out with z. <laughs> equals f of x, y, right? That's our function. 
right? So my first partials are f, x, and f, y. My second partials All right, we can take the partial of fx with respect to x, right? So we go f, x, x. I can take the partial of fx with respect to y. So I go f, x, y. I can take the partial of f, y with respect to x. So I go f, y, x. And I can take the partial of f of fy with respect to y. So I go f, y, y. All right, so I have two first derivatives. I have four second derivatives. Uh, there's a reason why we don't usually go for the third derivative here, I, aside from the fact that it, it doesn't have uh, a good meaning. Okay, um, each time you do this, you are doubling the number of derivatives that you end up with. All right, so that exponentially ends up with a whole lot of derivatives if you're if you're looking for the third or the fourth derivative of anything. Um, so when we do the second partials, basically the way this works is I am taking fx and I am taking the partial of that with respect to x. All right, I'm taking fx first, then the partial of that with respect to y. Over here, it's the other way around. I'm taking fy and the partial of that with respect to x. Over here, I'm taking fy and the partial of that with respect to y. All right, so uh, there's a couple of other notations here. We can use the curly d notation for this. This would be, all right, let's see, the second partial of f with respect to x squared. This one you would write as the second partial of f with respect to, now we're doing, uh, hang on a second, x, y, so you would say y, x. The notation gets reversed here because you're doing x first, then y. All right, over here, the second partial of f with respect to x, y, again, because you're doing y first, then x. And over here, the second partial of f with respect to uh, y squared. All right. All right, now one notation that I didn't show you was the notation if you're using other variables, okay? Sometimes you might want to be a little more general and say, well, uh, I've got like a first variable and a second variable. All right, so another notation that you could use here because we always write x, y is this, f1. This would be f2. So if I did that, then this would be uh, this would be f11, one, one. this would be f12, this would be f21, and this would be f22. Two, two. Right. The book sometimes goes back and forth between those different notations. I pretty much am going to stick with fx, fy or f whatever variables we're using at the time. I think it's a little more uh, uh, visual in terms of understanding what's going on. Okay. Um, all right, so let's take a look at what happens when we calculate second derivatives. I'm going to move up here. Okay. All right. All right, so let's take a function. I have a function here. Actually, it's the function that we did before. Uh, so I probably could just scroll up, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, we're going to do this again. All right, so f x y equals x to the third plus x squared y to the third. 
uh, minus 2y squared. All right, and we've already figured out, right, fx is 3x squared plus 2xy to the third. And I'm going to come over here, and fy is 3x squared y squared minus 4y. All right, so that we already did. Um, let's see what this is. Goodbye. Nope, that is not OK. That's weird. Um, OK, uh, so I want to take the second partials. All right, so I'm going to do this one first. So we're going to do f x x. All right, which means I'm doing the derivative of this with respect to x. So y is a constant. So with respect to x, that becomes 6x. With respect to x, right, the derivative of 2x is 2. So that becomes 2y to the third. All right. Over here, let's come over here for a minute. Let's do fyy. All right, so now y is the variable, x is the constant. All right, so if y is the variable, I'm going to bring the 2 in front here, so that's going to be 6x squared y minus y is the variable, so that is going to be 4. All right, so there are my two first, my two second partials with respect to the same variable. So let's look over here now and do fxy. All right, so now I'm doing the derivative of this with respect to y, all right, which means x is a constant. So that term becomes 0. x is a constant, so that's going to come down front. So that's going to be 6xy squared. OK. Now, over here, uh, I'm going to do this. We'll do the other mix, what's called the mixed partial. So this is going to be yx. All right, so now we're doing this with respect to x. So y is a constant. So with respect to x, that's this term here. Bring this down. I get 6xy squared. And with respect to x, that's a constant. So that's going to be 0. All right, you might notice something here. These two are the same. Right? And I'm sure some of you are going, well, does that always happen? No, it doesn't always happen. But it does always happen if you have a continuous function. Okay, um, This is going to be true. Right? This is going to be true if the mixed partials are continuous. And if the second derivative is continuous, then the first derivative has to be continuous. And if the first derivative is continuous, we know the function has to be continuous. All right, so an indication that you have a continuous function is that your mixed partials are the same. All right, if you know your function is continuous, then you know your mixed partials are going to be the same. If you know your mixed partials are the same, then you know your function is continuous. It's a nice give and take there. Okay. Um, all right, so for those of you who are taking differential equations right now, one of the things that you had to do at the beginning of your differential equations course, I'm sure, was to determine whether something was a solution to a differential equation. And I know I mentioned at some point when we were still meeting face to face that there is something called partial differential equations. Okay, so I have an example here of a partial differential equation. For those of you who haven't taken differential equations yet, eventually you will and you'll figure this out and you'll see what I'm doing here. But this is just a little jump uh, here. All right, so what I have is a wave equation. All right, and I'm going to let me write the differential equation down. All right, so it is the second partial, the second partial of u. Nope, that's in the wrong place. Hang on. 
the second partial of u with respect to t squared is equal to a squared, a is a constant, uh, second partial of u with respect to x squared. All right, now here's what this represents. All right, you have a wave All right, and u of x t represents the height of that wave at a particular point x. All right, so this is the function that we're looking at. All right, so u of x t represents the height of the wave at a particular point along the wave's length x. All right, so here's what we want to do. I want to verify that, uh, where's my function, that u of xt equals sine of x plus at satisfies this wave equation, all right? We want to see that this satisfies, oh my god, I still can't spell, satisfies the wave equation. All right, so again, if you've taken differential equations already, you probably already have figured out what to do. If you haven't, what I want to do is put this into here and show that the two sides are equal. So give me a second, I need a little bit more space here. That's good, okay. All right, so this equation says I need the second partial of u with respect to t squared. All right, so the second partial of u with respect to t squared, I'm gonna work over here, means that I first have to take the first partial of u with respect to t. So I do the partial of u with respect to t all right, so I'm doing the derivative of this. So again, derivative of sine is cosine. I'm going to leave a little space there because I'm going to x plus a t. Now again, we're doing the derivative with respect to t. So when I do the derivative inside, x is a constant, so that's 0. a is also a constant, so the derivative of a t is just going to be a, so that's just going to throw an a out front there. All right. And then the second partial of u with respect to t squared. So I'm going to take again the derivative with respect to t of this. All right, so we already did the first partial, so you can kind of see what's going to happen here. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. All right, so negative, I'll leave a little space there, sine x plus a t. And then again, we're taking the derivative of the inside with respect to t. So x is a constant, so that's 0. The derivative of at is going to be a, so I multiply that out here, and I get a squared. All right, so there's the second partial with respect to t. All right, so that is this side of the equation. So I can plug that in over here on this side of the equation. All right, and we want to see, we're checking, I'm going to put a question mark there, to see if that is equal to a squared times the second partial of u with respect to x squared. All right, so let's put a little wiggly here. So I need the, sec the first partial of u with respect to x. All right, and that is going to be, again, derivative of sine is cosine. Leave a little room there. Cosine x plus a t. All right, and now we're taking the derivative with respect to x. That means t is a constant, so the derivative of this end is 0. 
the derivative of that is 1. Okay, so I didn't need that space there. Okay, so that's the whole thing. Second partial of u with respect to x squared. Again, I'm taking the derivative of this with respect to x. So again, derivative of cosine is negative sine x plus a t. All right, with respect to x, this is a constant, so its derivative is 0. This has a derivative of 1, so that is the whole second partial. So now I can plug this in over here, minus sine, sine x plus a t. All right, now you can look at this and say, okay, yeah, these two are equal, but I'm just going to finish it off here, right? So I've got a squared sine x plus a t. And if I move that negative outside, which I can do, sine x plus a t. So that checks, that verifies. All right, so the only thing you're going to be asked to do with partial differential equations is to verify that something is a solution. All right, you don't need to, or show that it's not, or decide whether it is or not. All right, so some of the questions are going to ask, uh, some of the questions in the homework are going to ask you, is this function a solution to this differential equation? All right, or partial differential equation. So for you, for your point, all you really need to do is just check. All right, calculate the derivatives the way they are in the differential equation. Plug it in, work out the algebra, and it'll either be a solution or it won't. Okay. All right, so um, I have pretty much done here. Um, I'm going to, oh, I don't have that on my switcher. Okay, so I'm not going to do that now. All right, so I am going to um, upload this video uh, with a little note to be patient in the middle because I forgot to switch something. Uh, and uh, this way I won't get emails, hopefully. Um, the homework assignment is already posted, so you know what to do. Watch the video. Um, the uh, PowerPoints are up on Blackboard, so you might want to at this point, if you haven't already done it, download the PowerPoints, all right, and um, use them as uh, a second lecture, all right? I would break them out, except that they're not broken out in the zip file. They're only by chapter, not by section. So I'll leave it to you. You guys know what to do with PowerPoints, so. All right, uh, that's about it.